And as mentioned, the meat industry is 2,000 workers short right now and is hoping the government's work visa changes will help fill those gaps with overseas workers. Today's changes will mean in the regions the requirement to look for a local worker first will be ditched for some jobs. Some workers in lower income positions will now be able to bring their families with them and industry-specific agreements will be negotiated with sectors highly reliant on migrant workers, including the meat industry. Matt Ballard is from Silver Fern Farm which processes premium quality lamb, beef and venison all over the country. And he reckons the visa changes will make recruitment easier. Yeah, Lisa, at the peak of the season, still Fern Farms employs up to 6,000 people across 13 plants um, from top of the North Island and Dargaville all the way down to Southland. And every year um, to fill that, that number of seats, we recruit anywhere between two thousand and two and a half thousand people at any point in time during the main season which typically runs from December to August uh, we may be short um, between two and five hundred staff at, at, at different points of time during the course of the season so the ability to have some flexibility to help us fill roles right in the peak production periods is really valuable for us. What kind of jobs are you talking about here are they jobs that people would want? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we provide great career paths too. We are one of the biggest on-the-job trainers, as all the industries go these days. We, we offer uh, uh, new people coming into the industry pathways to become more skilled, to move through the pay grade and to have later on in their career supervisory opportunities. So, yes, there's a training pathway. A lot of the people that come into our plants do need to learn new skills. Um, and it's a highly controlled work environment. We produce food for the world of the highest quality and it's a safety orientated environment, so there are requirements. So why can't you get the people? Because you're painting a picture of a career path, good solid jobs, I imagine quite decent money, so why can't you get people? Look, we do. You know, we we, we, we get 2,000 people a year, to be fair, but we could always use a few hundred more. And I think there's complex reasons why it's harder than it used to be. There's some socioeconomic region, reasons where we are out in the rural areas um, and, and, and it just seems to be the case that um, getting people to stay in seasonal work is more challenging than it used to be. So at the moment, how many, what percentage of your workers w- would be overseas workers? Uh, roughly, um, I'd... I'd, I'd Roughly, maybe 5%. We, we have nearly 300 people coming through the Pacific Islands on the current approval and principal program. We also have halal butchers who are uh, uh, a Muslim denomination skilled butcher, butchery workers to allow our plants to be halal certified. And then out there, there'll be lots and lots of other people that have come to New Zealand either during the course of the season or during the course of their lives. So it's a little bit hard to say specifically but it's a decent number. So how do you reckon these new visa changes announced today, how are they going to help you fill that up to 500 jobs each season? Firstly, I'd like to commend the Ministry on the work they did consulting with industry. We've been involved both at a meat industry level and I've been involved personally, Silver Fern Farms, giving feedback through the consultation process and the Ministry has listened. So I, I believe that the... The key things are the simplification of the process, the one single immigration visa, the employer accreditation and the industry immigration agreements, which we hope to successfully be one of the first industries to put one of those in place with the ministry. So what is that, Matt? Can you help people understand Um, what that means? Will it mean you get a set number of people or how does it work? Look, we need to work through some of those details. But my understanding at the moment is that we'll outline the broad parameters of what the industry needs by regional needs and the accredited employers within that framework will be able to move faster than we otherwise would have. I think it's, it's critical that other key parties are involved in that process. We've got a good relationship with the Meat Workers Union and, and with other industry stakeholders. So I think it's really, really important that everyone's on the same page because at the end of the day, having the right number of people in our plants allows us to produce at a higher level with good quality 
and therefore all of our workforce gets the rewards for that. So that industry-wide agreement, do you think it will take away the flood of paperwork in essence that, and save time? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and as, as the process has been to date, we've tended to need to resubmit multiple times, multiple years, individual plants. So the administration piece of it's been difficult. And I think even better, our ability to communicate with prospective employees about timelines and expectations and their families as well um, it's going to be really positive. I, I also believe the ability for workers on immigration visas to support their families, that change is also a very positive one. So this is the one where um, they they put a kind of stop to it in, in 2017, I think it was. If you're a, a low-income worker, you will now be able to bring your family with you, correct? Under the right circumstances, yeah, that's yes. right. So and, and well, why is that good for you guys? Good. Well, look, I mean, I think if you want, we're, we're better off having someone who's going to be employed by us for a number of seasons, a number of years. That way we can offer career paths, we can offer movement through the pay grade, and that's much more likely when they've got the whānau and family around them. So your, your businesses are mainly in the regions. So there is a move here to get rid of the requirement in the regions to prove that you've looked for a Kiwi worker first. What difference is that going to make for you? Practically, probably not a massive difference because the reality is we were advertising for roles, but, you know, we're doing that anyway. I think it became a bit of an administrative hurdle um, to be honest with you. So, again, if that can be cleaned up, then that, that's all good. Um, obviously, you know, as a New Zealand major employer, if we can find skilled, capable local people, of course we're going to take them. It just makes sense. So the counterintuitive idea that we wouldn't do that never really stacked up anyway. Are overseas workers cheaper for you? Because that's no, the other thing not, people say. No, not at all. No, no, we're... All of our agreements um, where the, the, the um, people come and work in roles from overseas sources, they are all covered by the same frameworks, um, the majority of which are negotiated with trade unions, and there's no attempt whatsoever to um, put any other conditions in place.